Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 864 that says shortest path to get all keys. So guys, this is really a hard question and it takes some extra effort to solve this question. So yeah guys, it's okay that if you are not able to solve in one go, but yeah, no worries. In today's video, we will discuss the complete uh, solution for this question. So yeah guys, stick till the end and watch the complete video. Now here in, to, in this video, I won't be explaining you much of the question part because of the time constraint. So let, let us quickly revise the question. So here, um, what you have, what you are asked to do is, uh, you, you are given one starting point that is uh, symbolized with at the rate. So that is a starting cell. And from this cell, you just need to collect all the keys, right? There is no destination node uh, or nothing like that. Your only aim is to collect all the keys that are present in the given grid, okay? Now you cannot uh, travel to the neighboring cell if the neighboring cell has a is a has is a lock they, for which you don't have a key. So in that case you cannot travel. In the second case, if the neighboring cell it has a wall, then you cannot travel, right? Or if it is out of bounds, then also you cannot travel. So uh, whenever you travel to any neighboring cell, then you have to keep these things or this condition you need to handle, right? Now uh, your aim is to collect all the keys, right? And in the minimum number of moves. So yeah, this is it for the question. So if you take a look at the first example. So here initially you are at this position. So this is your at the rate symbol. See, this is a string uh, of grid uh, and each cell is represented by some character. So I just uh, go through the question once in order to understand everything. Okay. So from here you would start your uh, path and you need to collect all the keys. So here there is one key and here there is another key. So this key would be represented by small alphabet characters and the lock would be represented by big alphabet characters. These two are locks. Okay, now let's say uh, if you are if you are somewhere here, here and you need to travel to here, then you need the key to unlock this lock, right? So that key is here. So uh, uh, yeah, you require you would require one uh, key to unlock if you if you have a lock in your path. Now whenever you get a key in your path, you will collect that key. Okay, so uh, uh, making a dry run for this example, initially you are at here, then you move to this neighbor. You cannot go downwards because that is a wall here. This is a wall. So from here you move to here you collect this key then you move to here uh, then either you can either move to here or move to here right so let's say we move to here then here then here now we have the key this key can unlock this lock okay so we have a key to unlock this lock so yeah we can move to this cell. from here we move to here and then here so in total eight steps we uh, collected both the keys right this is the key one and this is the key two so in eight steps we collected all the keys and this is the minimum steps by which you can solve this given example so yeah guys uh, i hope you guys have now somewhat understanding of the question although i have explained you in very short but yeah uh, just to make some efforts by your own and try to understand the question okay now what would be the typical approach to solve this question so yeah either you can do breakfast search or you can do dfs plus backtracking see uh, not simple dfs would work we need to backtrack in order to find most optimal path so these are the two ways by which you can solve the question and also we will maintain one visited boolean error right otherwise uh, yeah otherwise uh, you won't be able to solve this question we you need to maintain the visited boolean error just try once what will happen uh, if you won't maintain visited boolean error you this if you don't do this then it will give you runtime error if you will give you will get runtime error okay and yeah, to solve this question uh, via bfs or dfs plus backtracking you need to maintain this uh, integers like the i and j position these variables you need to maintain then total keys remaining so if the total number of remaining keys are zero then you would stop yeah it is obvious that our aim is to collect all the keys and if there is no remaining keys are there then we would stop then uh, if the grid of ij equals to log then we would check if the key is present if key is not present then also we would stop right uh, and if grid of ij equals to key then we would add this key so this is a typical uh, understanding that we get to from this question and if you code for this uh, via this approach then it will look something like this so here i have coded the dfs plus backtracking approach you can also do the same thing in bfs so in this code what i have done is firstly i have ran this for loop in order to know what is the starting position where this at the rate is there as well as to know how many total keys are there okay then i uh, call this recursive solve function so inside the solve function what i am doing is I'm checking if the current cell is a log that means it is a capital letters so its ASCII values lies between 65 and 90 then I'm simply checking do we have a key for this log or not okay 
so by uh, by doing this uh, bitwise and i will explain you this later and if uh, the grid of ij is a, a slower character that means it is a key and in that case i am simply adding that key current key to the keys that i have uh, yeah and then this condition if the remaining keys are zero then return zero okay okay and yeah this is the thing uh, to mark the current cell as visited so what i am doing is i am marking that current cell as a wall so yeah this is one way to mark the current cell as visited and then trying to move in four direction see guys uh, the maximum value i am uh, initializing so here if you take a look of m and n there's their both sizes less than equal to 30 so m cross n would be uh, less than equal to 930 multiplied by 30 and yeah you can return any number greater than 900 as a int max value so in order to find the least part what we would do is we, uh, we would return the max value if any of the condition fails right if we don't get the path then we return some max value right so here you can take 1000 as a max value because uh, uh, because the uh, correct answer would be anywhere less than equal to 900 so any number greater than 900 you can pass it as an int max right so yeah then we travel in the four direction if if the wall is not present and yeah this is inside the bounds and as well as wall two condition we are checking in order to traverse in four direction and then we are this is the backtracking step okay we are marking grid of ij as the original character that we had see in each, here we made is as visited so this is to mark it as visited now again we are making two original character we have so that we can backtrack right and here we return the minimum for up down left and right now you might be having a question that how we how we know whether the uh, key is present or not okay so uh, let's say here keys value can be a b c d e f right six values we can have as per the constraint so we can map a as 0 1 2 3 4 5 and lock can will also have so a b c d e f so in the question we have given that each corresponding key will have a corresponding lock lock right and the lock are represented by capital letters whereas the keys are represented by small letters now in order to know do we have the key for the corresponding lock or not then we would check that by using a bitwise so how we would use bitwise so yeah let's check it so here i have opened one c plus plus terminal uh, in order to explain you how to check do we have a key present for the corresponding lock or not by using a bitwise so let's say k any we have initialized here k equal to zero see understand this thing first then the whole bitwise concept we are using here would be very much clear in your mind. So let's say a here initially we are using, we are initializing k equal to zero. That means understand that we have no keys right now. Okay. Then what we are doing, we are uh, making a bitwise or operation with uh, with one uh, one. This is left shift two times. So let's say if you want to mark the uh, b, uh, you have the key b. So that means here let me write we have key b so uh, so for b what let's say we are uh, making b we are mapping b with 2 that means we have to mark the second bit as 1 so in the, so what we will do is whenever we have a key let's uh, then we would mark that key with some integer so here let's say we have marked this b with 2 and then we will set the second bit of the keys so let's say we would set the second bit of this key so how we can set the second bit so initially all the bits were zero see all the bits were zero then we would have to make uh, the second bit or the first index so this is the second bit from the right so we always make a uh, set bit or unset a bit from the right so yeah in order to set the bit the second bit what we would do is we would make one left shift two times right so yeah if you and do or so that means now we have uh, the value of as a four in the k and that means the second bit is set right okay now if you want to check whether uh, so let's say afterwards you get a lock lock or uh, with a c so uh, lock with a capital a so uh, yeah that you can check then let's say you want to check a lock uh, for a capital b so how you would do is you will take bitwise and with same thing right we would check the same way here we have made a bitwise of and then we are taking bitwise and so that means if this value equals to zero then yeah we don't have a um, key corresponding to this lock so for a lock capital b we want key small b so how we can check it the same way we have set the second bit we would check whether the second bit is set or not 
okay now if you want to check whether we have a lock for c that's that is lock c then how we would do is we would check the third bit is the third bit set or not so yeah since the third bit is not set so here uh, third bit not set present similarly fourth and fifth bit are not set because at this time we have only the key two okay that's why only second bit is set so by making the values uh, from 0 to 1 we can know whether we have that corresponding key or not right so got this clear till here so let's say if uh, after a while we ha have the key e so that is nothing uh, but represented by small e character so we map that with a fifth bit from the right so what we would do is we would set that fifth bit so uh, let so this is the way we would set the fifth bit now we would again ch check how many bits are set at this point so we would see that second bit is set and as well as fifth bit is set so this uh, so by this way we can know uh, that we if we have encountered a lock capital E then we can know that yeah we have a key corresponding to the lock capital E because the fifth bit is set so yeah by bit manipulation that means changing the bit ith bit from the right we can know uh, that do we have a key corresponding to the current lock on right okay got it so here the keys and logs both can have up till six values so yeah our keys variable this keys variable uh, can be at max 111 111 so that is 64 this value is 64 okay so uh, for each let's say for each ith uh, key we, so this will represent a this will represent b this will represent c d e and f so if um, the if you if you want to mark that we have a key then what you will do you will mark this as one uh, all others would remain zero okay now if you want to mark let's say you have the fifth key then what you will do one zero 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 one zero then you have marked the fifth key uh, by changing the bit of this key this variable right see it was initialized to zero this was initialized to zero then we change we simply did what we simply first make our operation to set the ith bit and then we perform an operation here to know whether the ith bit is sort or not right got it clear deal here so this was the main thing this bit manipulation was the important thing to uh, learn this right to uh, learn this in this solution right so this way we would know that whether the ith uh, we have the key for the corresponding lock or not or the ith bit is set or not now there is one so problem in this solution then let's say if you have some example like this some test case like this so let's say initially you are at here so from here you move to this position then you move to this position then you move to this position this position now here you cannot go so you would stop now after this also uh, you won't be able to go back right because we won't visit the cell that is already visited either in bfs or in dfs plus backtracking we won't visit the cell that is already visited so yeah let's say we try to discover this path okay then we move to here 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 then we move to uh, here right but afterwards we uh, when we move to here we would stop because yeah we don't have the key for this lock in this path we don't have so guys you would tell that yeah there is no solution to solve this question and yeah we should return minus one but no that is not the case here the thing is let's say we move to here then here then you will again move back to here then to this cell then here here okay so here total you moved one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so in ten moves you collected all the keys right so that means that we have to revisit some of the cell that were visited in the past in order to solve this question so to solve this type of uh, test case we need to revisit some of the cells right got it then only uh, if you would have if you would revisit this cell then only you would be collect uh, both the keys that is this key as well as this key these three keys you would be able to collect right so we have to do something uh, and we have to make some condition by which we can know that should we revisit it cell or not so what we would do is we would maintain one more uh, parameter so initially in the visited what we were marking we were marking that i and j index that is the current cell is visited by i and j these two indices we were marking the current cell is visited but also we would mark with a key so this will create one state okay this will create one state so in, here initially from 0 0 and the key was 0 we move to here to this right uh, that is 1 comma 0 1 comma 0 then from here we move to 2 comma 0 at 2 comma 0 our state our uh, number of keys increase so let's say so here key increased to 1 
then since the key increase then we can again move to 1 comma 0 that means we can again we would again revisit this cell because now we are visiting this cell with a different set of keys right initially there were zero keys now we have one key so that's why we can this is that is a different state and also and since this is a different state we would revisit the cell so our state will not only contains the ith and jth index as well as the number of keys by which it was visited in the past so if the number of keys are different right now then we would revisit that cell in order to get the answer okay so we can revisit the cell if number of keys we are holding changes right so here the initially number of keys we were holding was zero so ideally we won't visit but now the number of keys we were holding is not zero it has changed to one so we would revisit okay clear till here so this is the state that we have to maintain in order to revisit the cell and in order to solve this question uh, yeah, I hope that yeah, uh, it was a bit difficult to come up to this solution directly. But if you have seen this test case, right, then you would be able to come this solution easily, right? Because you would only move to here uh, uh, based, based on some visited condition and that condition, visited condition would be nothing but to maintain a state along uh, with of ij along with the number of keys. So the corresponding code solution to this approach is here. So here I have coded uh, for the BFS approach. This is mainly what I uh, found uh, from the discuss section. So it was a good code. So I took that code. Um, so here we have to one structure in order to maintain these three things X, Y and total number of keys we have. So here also we are using the same bit manipulation concept to identify whether the uh, uh, key we have or not by changing the ith bit. Okay. So uh, this is the two for loops. So here what we are doing is if we found the starting position that is at the red, then uh, our st we would initialize our start by changing the i, j as well as the current keys to zero, right? And also mark this as scene. So now if you see this scene is a 3D vector, 3D vector to maintain whether we have visited or not. So why 3D vector? So one to maintain i, then second to maintain j and third to maintain this key. Now since this key has six bits it is it consists of six bits right six at bits so this value is nothing but 64 so we are we have to maintain 64 here of a size 64 now uh, then we uh, this is just to move in all four directions then we are taking a queue of a type this he heap node now this is a typical bfs approach we are uh, simply pushing the start node and yeah in the bfs approach what we are checking is for all neighboring index, we are checking whether they are out of bound. If they are out of bound, continue. Don't add to the queue. Then we would check if the if this um, character is upper. That means it is a type of lock. If it is a type of lock, then we would apply the same thing that we were doing ahead. We would check by using bitwise and whether uh, we have key or not. See, I already explained how to check by taking the and bitwise and, right? So yeah, we would check by taking a bitwise and, and yeah, if um, this this is zero that means it is not there then we would continue not proceed if it is a low one that means it is a key and we would make a bitwise or operation in order to store the key so this is to store the key and then we would mark this uh, also if it is already seen see after uh, after knowing that how uh, the keys that we have in the current state then we would check whether it has visited or not so visited we have uh, new x new y and the new keys right so if that was if this state was already visited we then we don't add in number queue and in the else we would add to our queue and also mark this state as visited and yeah for each step that we are taking we are uh, incrementing this step and if at any position if the uh, we would find if current of keys equal to all keys right uh, then we would return so all keys is nothing but here we have make bitwise or to store how many keys are there so let's say we have um, key a and c so A would represent to what? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and C would represent 0, 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, 1, right? This is how we would represent a, uh, key A in bitwise and key C in the bitwise. So what we are doing? We are taking the OR operation. So OR operation would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. Sorry guys, this is not 1. This would be 0. The th third bit is set. Here the first bit is set. Now taking bitwise or you will get something like this. So that means we have key A and key C. Now, if we get the same thing here in the current dot keys, then we would return the step. That means we have found the, uh, uh, that we have found all the keys and this is our base condition or successful uh, answer we have got. So yeah, we return the step and, all the, uh, and each time when we are performing uh, BFS, that means traversing to neighboring nodes, we apply this uh, steps plus plus 
and at the end we return minus 1 if we don't found any answer. So yeah guys that's all for this video. If you have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.